So today in the extraordinary form, it's the Feast of St. Catherine of Siena, uh, the great uh, lay Dominican a saint who, uh, who uh, through uh, her holiness and uh, the force of, uh, uh, of uh, her love, uh, got convinced the Holy Father, who was in the Babylonian captivity of, uh, of Avignon, um, which was a nice place and fancy and probably a lot nicer than Rome of the day, but nonetheless put him under the thumb of, uh, of the French king rather than uh, under the thumb of no one uh, except the Lord, uh, because only the Lord should command the successor to Peter, uh, she got him to move back to Rome. And, uh, you know, today the reading, uh, the gospel reading, uh, when you celebrate, it's celebrating St. Catherine is uh, from the common virgins, and it's, uh, it's the parable of the, of the wise and foolish virgins. And I think that really fits well. Um, Catherine of Siena had a couple of things, the couple of kind of imagery she went back to a lot, very powerfully. One, of course, is the blood of Christ, his compassionate blood, his merciful blood, and how we should bathe ourselves in that. And the other is this idea of fire. My nature is fire, she said. Uh, be who you should be, and you'll set the whole world on fire. And so in the parable, the wise virgins, right, uh, the parable is about these virgins waiting for the bridegroom to come, and they have lamps, and the wise virgins have oil, and the foolish virgins don't, and the bridegroom is late in coming, and so the, the wise virgins uh, tra- are able to trim their lamps and light them and, and follow the bridegroom in, but the foolish virgins have to try to go find oil to relight their fire. Um, and then by the time they do, it's too late. They've been locked out of the feast. And of course, um, fire, one of the images of fire, of course, is used, of course, it's divine love. Um, you know, the fiery ones, the seraphim who stand before the throne, and they're fiery because of, and they stand in the very presence of the love of God, the closest to the divine throne, or or the, the fire of the Holy Spirit that, um, you know, the paraclete who is who is called love, who, who descends upon Our Lady and the Apostles at Pentecost. And so when St. Catherine talks about her nature being fire, when she tells us that if we are who we should be, we'll set the world on fire, the idea is that if we are who we should be, we will be filled with divine charity. We will be on fire with divine love. And we will be able to therefore set the world afire with the same divine love. Her nature was fire. That She meant that she was given herself over since a young age in her visions, and especially in her mystical marriage uh, to our Lord, uh, given herself over to being that fire. And she did that in everything she did, not just in the um, in the big things, but in the small things, in with the mantle out of caring for the sick, the plague victims, um, you know, but also in the big things like writing letters to try to end wars among uh, warring Italian city states, and of course, uh, getting the Holy Father to come back to Rome, um, and that's really what uh, I think why the parable of the of the virgins is so important, especially for her. I mean. Um, because of that fire imagery, that what we are called to do, what did she do? She continually cultivated that fire. She made sure she had what she needed through the sacraments um, to keep it kindled. She uh, So that uh, when the bridegroom uh, called to her, it was burning brightly so she could enter into uh, the wedding feast of the Lamb. And that's really when she tells us that if we should be who we are, we should set the whole world ablaze. That's what she desires for us, too. It's what she kindled in the hearts of those who followed her, her closest friends and companions, many of, of all states in life, uh, including priests and religious, not just Dominicans, but Franciscans as well, and, and other members. But all these all these men and women of whatever state in life that, that were drawn to her, she drew them so that she could ignite them and set them on fire, so that they could, too, trim their lamps and and go get the oil they needed before it was too late. So they too could light a fire in their hearts and keep that fire burning. And that's really uh, what she calls us to do, what her example calls us to do, um, and and, and what her teaching calls us to do. And to do that in humility, uh, one of my favorite phrases from her dialogues uh, that she dictated the conversation between God and the soul is that uh, God says to the soul, says to her, but she stands here in the place of the soul, we can put ourselves in those places. I am he who is, and you are she who is not. That is to say that God is, and we are not, you know, in the strictest sense, right? Because God just is. God cannot not be. But all of all of us are contingent. We could have not been. We only are because God loved us into existence. God, to use an imagery uh, from Tolkien, um, from the Silmarillion, uh, the Annalindale, his creation kind of story, um, you know, the flame imperishable, he calls it, the very act of being. Let these things be, and he kindles in into the world he creates the flame imperishable this divine love this burning fire that is that is being itself that is charity itself that is everything uh, that brings us into existence and so we are of ourselves we are nothing but 
we are not of ourselves. We are of God, made uh, and made uh, by His will, by His love, and especially for us as 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 human beings, uh, male and female, made in His divine image. And so, not just having uh, the fire uh, in the sense of of the the fire of existence, but the fire even of divine love that we are called to enkindle that He wishes to pour upon us as His Holy Spirit. Those tongues of fire that pour down on Our Lady and the Apostles at Pentecost that He desires to inflame our own hearts so that we might uh, enkindle them. And uh, and this is uh, so vitally important, especially now, especially in this pandemic, especially when we're, we're physically separated. We uh, don't have the opportunity to receive the sacraments as much as we would uh, like to. Um, you know, uh, the Eucharist is not something uh, we can receive regularly right now because public masses are generally shut down most places. Um, you know, confession on some places is, is hard on is, is hard on the ground to get to. You know, even even here, right? My my parish where we have it every day, twice a day, and three times on Saturday. But even there, you know, if you can't come at those particular times, it's difficult. Um, you know, and it's even more difficult if you're in a place where, because of circumstances, Father can only do it by appointment only. Like he's the only one, and you know, he doesn't, you know. Or whatever reason, or his bishop, you know, in some places maybe the bishop said only by appointment only. Um, but it's hard. So we have to keep through our prayer um, and through our, our desire to receive the Eucharist, our desire uh, to be with the Lord. We have to, uh, in our lives, seek to continue to trim the wick of our hearts to, um, to receive the grace of God as oil so that that fire may continue to burn in us, that we might be like the wise virgins and that uh, and we might keep our, our wicks trimmed and our fire burning like St. Catherine can say, that our nature is fire. We were made uh, to be consumed by love and to give that love to others, that we were made to spread it and to bring that light of divine love to everyone we meet, so that when we're called into the heavenly marriage feast, into the heavenly banquet, uh, the banquet of heaven, uh, the banquet of the wedding feast of the Lamb, the, the eternal liturgy uh, of the life to come, that we might we might be prepared to enter in, to have the lamp, to l- the lamp of divine charity to light our way, and bring us into the divine presence, as it brought Catherine into the divine presence, as that fire that that consumed her her entire life that she sought to give to others, um, that uh, uh, the, that she sought to give to the whole world, uh, insofar as she could to set the whole world on fire, um, that, uh, that that we might have that same fire, that same divine charity burning in our hearts. So let's ask Catherine Santa to pray for us that we might burn too with the fire of divine love. Let's also ask uh, for a special prayer on consecrated virgins. Um, obviously, Catherine wasn't a consecrated virgin in the most strict technical sense, but, I mean, she was a laywoman, and she was mystically married to Christ, so, I mean, counts for me. And I've known one or two consecrated virgins in my life. I've, I've, I know uh, some young women who uh, are, are, are discerning that, vo- that vocation, that particular state, that way to live uh, the gospel and to give themselves over to service of the church. And let's, let's pray for all consecrated virgins, and um, you know, and all uh, all the all, all women discerning that vocation, um, that they might uh, that God might give them the grace to follow Him in that path of virginity, as He gave uh, Car- gave it to Catherine through His her mystical marriage to our Lord. And let us pray that, like Saint Catherine, they might burn with the fire of divine love, so that they might uh, live their lives in service of the Church, in service of the Lord. Uh, so that they too, uh, like the wise virgins of the parable, uh, might enter into the wedding feast with lamps well lit. As always, I'm remembering you in my prayers and my masses. Uh, Please say an ave for me if you get the chance. Uh, Stay safe out there, and always remember that God is in control.